In this video, we will be solving question 3.5, which says Randy Ratpack hates studying both economics and history. The more time he spends studying either subject, the less happy he is. But Randy has strictly convex preferences. Based on this information, we have two parts with us. Part A says sketch an indifference curve for Randy where the two commodities are hours per week spent studying economics and hours per week spent studying history. Will the slope of an indifference curve be positive or negative? And part B says, do Randy's indifference curve get steeper or flatter as we move from left to right along one of them? So before discussing the solution of the question, let's first understand what all information do we have. The question says, Randy hates studying both economics and history, which means for Randy, economics and history are bad commodities. Now, what do you mean by a bad commodity? By definition, a bad is a commodity that consumer doesn't like. The next thing we have is the Randy has strictly convex preferences. Now note that till now we have always dealt with convex preferences and not strictly convex preferences. So there is a very important differentiation between the two which you must understand. Convex preferences has the definition as the preferences are convex. If the consumer is indifferent between the consumption bundle x1, x2 and y1, y2 then the weighted average bundle or the combination bundle of x1 and x2 and y1 in Y2 is at least as good as the consumption bundle X1, X2 such that T is between 0 and 1 where both 0 and 1 are included. In simple terms, convexity says that the consumer weakly prefers averages to the extremes. So if the consumer is indifferent between X and Y, then she weakly prefers the weighted average Tx plus 1 minus Ty to either X or why? Now note that here we are focusing on the weak preference which by definition means that if the consumer prefers or is indifferent between the two bundles we say that she weakly prefers x1 x2 to y1 and y2 and it is written in this manner. Now when we are talking about the weak preference that include both preferred and indifferent. Now let's see the graphical representation of convex preferences. Suppose this is your indifference curve where you have good 1 on the x-axis and good 2 on the y-axis. By definition of convex preferences, firstly we have to choose any two consumption bundle on the indifference curve such that the consumer would be indifferent between them. Suppose these are those two consumption bundle and then we have to see the weighted average bundles which is this entire line and here t is between 0 and 1 where 0 and 1 are both included. So that would be these consumption bundles. Now for the preferences to be convex we want that consumer should be at least getting as much as satisfaction as he was getting before. That means the weighted average bundle should be weakly preferred. Now note that if your weighted average bundle turns out to be these red dots, then the consumer is indifferent between them. But if your weighted average bundle happens to be anywhere on this entire line, then the consumer is getting higher level of satisfaction, assuming that your preference detection is this. Thus here, the preferences are convex. Now consider a second example. Again, this is your indifference curve. But here, this time, your consumption bundles are these. That is, consider this to be x1 and x2 and this to be y1 and y2. Then, since they are lying on the same indifference curve, thus the consumer would be indifferent between them and all the combination bundles would be this black line. Now since this black line is coincident with the indifference curve that means the consumer would be indifferent along the entire line or for all the weighted average bundles. Here we say that the preferences are still convex because the definition of weak preference includes or so he should be either preferring or should be indifferent between the two and here the case is of indifference that's why we say the, con the preferences are still convex. Now after quickly revising the convex preferences let's move to the important part of this question which is strictly convex preferences. Again by definition if you compare both the definition there's a very slight difference between the two but that slight difference is making a huge impact. So let's understand. So by definition the preferences are strictly convex if the consumption bundle x1, x2 is indifferent to the consumption bundle y1 and y2 then the weighted average bundle which is this should be strictly prefer to the consumption bundle x1, x2 such that 
Your T is between 0 and 1. In simple terms, strict convexity says that the consumer strictly prefers the averages to the extremes. So, if the consumer is indifferent between X and Y, then she strictly prefers the weighted average Tx plus 1 minus Ty to either X or Y. And what do you mean by strict preference? So, if the consumer strictly prefers one bundle to the other, it means that he or she would choose one over the other given the opportunity. Now, note the difference here. Here, we were dealing with weak preference, but here we are dealing with strict preference. So, the case of indifference is not applicable to this scenario. We, I will come back to this point in a few minutes. Secondly, here the T is between 0 and 1 but your 0 and 1 are both included and here they are not included. So, be very careful. Let's see the difference graphically. Suppose this is your indifference graph or your indifference curve and if I choose the two consumption bundle as this, as this point and this point and since they are lying on the indifference curve, that means the consumer would be indifferent between them. Now, if I calculate the weighted average bundle, they would lie on this entire line. But note that here T is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are not included. That's why these are your hollow circles instead of solid circles, which was the case here. Because we are not including these consumption bundle when we are talking about your weighted average bundle as T is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are not included. Lastly, Definition says that these weighted average bundles should be making the consumer strictly better off or it should be giving a higher level of satisfaction. So, assuming that this is your preference direction, then all the bundles on this line are making the consumer better off. Hence, the preferences are strictly convex in this particular case. Now, you might be wondering that this is the only small point that you have to not include these end consumption bundles while calculating the weighted average bundle but no. Consider this case here when the weighted average bundle gave the consumer the same level of satisfaction as the indifferent consumption bundles then also we said that the preferences are convex but in case of strictly convex preferences we want that your weighted average bundle should give the consumer a higher level of satisfaction than your indifference bundle which are your x bundle and y bundle. Thus every strictly convex preference is a convex preference. So, that means every strictly convex preference would be considered to be a convex preference but not the other way round. So, be very careful of that. So, whenever we are dealing with strictly convex preference, so whenever we are dealing with strictly convex preference, you have to check for it separately and you cannot just assume, yeah, the preferences are convex, so they must be strictly convex as this is the wrong interpretation. Again, I am repeating, every strictly convex preference is considered to be a convex preference, but other way around does not work. Also, one more thing, how would you distinguish between the convex preferences and strictly convex preferences graphically? Note that in convex preferences, you can have a flat points like this. There by your weighted average bundles can be indifferent but in your strict convex preferences there cannot be any flat regions like this there has to be always a curvature this is a shortcut method to distinguish between the convex preferences and convex preferences that you just need to look for a flat region now after learning about the difference between convex preferences and strictly convex preferences let's come back to the question which says sketch the indifference curve for randy where the two commodities are hours per week spent studying economics and hours per week spent studying history. Will the slope of indifference curve be positive or negative? Now note that in order to draw any indifference curve, you first need to have a basic idea how the preferences are, how will they look or they behave. For that, we have some information with us given in the question. Now how will you all gather that information? Firstly, we learn that for Randy, your both economics and history are bad commodities. Secondly, we learn that the preferences are strictly convex, which graphically means like this. 
but note that you cannot just draw your curve like this because you have strictly convex preferences we have to consider other things as well the next thing to note here is that the more time he spends studying either subject the less happy he is thus if he wants to increase his hours of studying for history then he has to reduce his hours of studying for economics that means there is a negative relation between the two which means your slope of the graph would be negative which would look like this or you can say that at any point in the graph if i draw a tangent at that point then that tangent should be downward sloping lastly note that randy hates both the subjects which means for him the less is better now what does this imply this means that his preferences would be towards the origin because he want less of both the commodities also note that whenever i say that the less is better which might seem a little odd because we mostly deal with the case where the consumer wants more and more and we are taught for the consumer more is better but here the less is better why because for him both of the commodities are bad commodities so despite the fact that for him less is better he is still considered to be a rational consumer as he hates both history and economics now with all this information in hand that your preference direction is towards the origin you have negative slope your preferences are strictly convex let's try and draw your indifference curve now we will take these information into account one by one on the graph you have hours of studying economics on the x axis and hours studying history on the y axis firstly we have your preference direction is towards the origin which means his preference direction would be this or towards the origin which would be something like this secondly we have your graph has negative slope now whenever i say about a negative slope i have three direct images that comes into my mind which is this it could be either straight line or it could look like this or it could look like this now let's see which option is feasible for randy let's consider this case to be number 1 this to be number 2 and this to be number 3 and let's work on it one by one we have negative slope we have your preferences are towards the origin which is this direction and for this it would be this direction and lastly we have to check the preferences should be strictly convex note here that this is a straight line which means it's a flat region which means the preferences are not strictly convex for this particular case hence this cannot be the indifference curve for randy that's why previously i told you this quick trick to see the preferences to be strictly convex or not and thus we don't have to calculate all the weighted average bundles and see if the weighted average bundles are making him better off or not it's just a quick trick that you can always do now let's consider this scenario if this is your indifference curve then yes it has a negative slope yes the preferences are towards the origin but what about the strictly convex preferences your by definition your strict convexity says that the consumer strictly prefers averages to the extremes so if i take any two extreme bundles which are these two and the consumer is indifferent between them since they are lying on the indifference curve or then calculating all the weighted average bundles would be these let's see if uh, the weighted average bundle is making the consumer better off or not if i consider this to be my any random weighted average bundle and i draw the indifference curve passing through this weighted average bundle then i see that the new indifference curve would be here note that since the preferences are towards the origin thus this new indifference curve or the blue indifference curve would make the consumer worse off that means at this indifference curve randy has to study more economics and more history as compared to a scenario when he was at a red indifference curve since randy less is better thus black indifference curve is giving him a lower level of satisfaction and hence he won't prefer the weighted average bundle to the extreme bundles as the weighted average bundles are making him worse off which is in direct contradiction to the definition of strict convexity so So this cannot be your indifference curve for Randy. Now, lastly, we have this shape. So the preferences are again towards the origin. Yes, you have a negative slope. And let's see if the preferences are strictly convex or not. So if I choose any two consumption bundles, which are these two 
blue dots and I calculate the weighted average bundles. And I randomly choose any weighted average bundle which is this and try to draw the indifference curve passing through this weighted average bundle. Then I will see that this weighted average bundle is giving the higher level of satisfaction to Randy as his preference direction is towards the origin. That means at this purple indifference curve, now Randy has to give few hours to both history and economics. That means he would be better off as he hates both the subjects. Thus here, the Randy would always prefer the weighted app averages to the extreme where these two blue dots are considered to be extremes hence this would be your strict convex preferences thus this graph passes through all the three criterion we had for the indifference curve that means this is the indifference curve for randy now note one thing here that Whenever I'm talking about strict convex preferences, it has this shape. But despite of that, I'm saying that this shape is not strictly convex, but this shape is. And both of these shapes are exact opposite. So this might be confusing you. But note very important thing here that when I was talking about strictly convex preference in this scenario, then my preference direction was this. Then I considered that more is better. But here we have less is better. And your both the commodities are bad commodities. And since less is better, that means your preference direction is towards the origin, that which is opposite of this. That's why this was not considered to be a strictly convex preference, whereas this was strictly convex preference. So be very careful about the preference direction as well, as it can change the entire game. Now, after sketching the indifference curve for Randy, the second part says that will the slope of indifference curve be positive or negative which we have already answered that the slope would be negative as in order to increase his hours of studying for history he has to reduce his hours of studying for economics and due to the negative relationship the slope would be negative now moving to the part b of this question which says do randy's indifference curve get steeper or flatter as you move from left to right long one of them from your previous part this was the indifference curve for randy now as you can clearly see that the graph is getting steeper if I move from left to right for hours of studying. That means it is getting steeper and steeper. If you're not able to figure this out visually, I have another method for you. So whenever we are talking about the graph is steeper or flatter, that means we're talking about the slope of the indifference curve. And the slope of the indifference curve is nothing but your marginal rate of substitution. Now, how will you bring this question in terms of this? That means if I'm moving from left to right, is the slope of my graph reducing or is increasing so if it is increasing then we say that the curve is becoming steeper and steeper but as we move along from left to right if the slope is decreasing then we say it's becoming flatter now let's calculate the slope at different points of this graph to do that let's draw the tangents at different points that would be this firstly if at this point we have green tangent now moving along to the right we at this point we have this purple tangent which is steeper than this green tangent let's verify one more time let's draw the tangent at this point which is this blue tangent which is steeper than the purple tangent this means your slope is reducing as we move from left to right thus we say that the indifference curve gets steeper and steeper as you move from left to right along one of them so the answer to this question is steeper